Okay, welcome everyone. My name is Martin Danjou and this is the Summer of Code with Jenkins Year 2020, the Coding Phase 1 demo. I will now share my screen. All right, so welcome everyone. In uh, this difficult year, we have decided to get together and help each other write better code for the Jenkins open source um, CI CD platform. And uh, this year we are participating in Summer of Code. So the agenda for today is a short introduction to Jenkins in Summer of Code. We're gonna have demos by our students for the phase coding phase one. And we're gonna have questions and answers for um, at the end of each presentation and at the end of this presentation. So which Google Summer of Code organization are we? We are the Jenkins Project organization. So this is where the Jenkins and the Jenkins X projects are being uh, mentored this year for the other CICD um, projects please look under the CD Foundation uh, website where you're going to find those other projects. We are the Jenkins one. This is our fourth year in Summer of Code and this year we have approximate we have had 20 project ideas that were submitted and we accepted seven students this is a great year for us. We have uh, two to four mentors per project. And um, this is you know, one of, of our greatest participation. So we've grown slowly but surely every year. We're hosting Jenkins and Jenkins X um, Summer of Code projects this year. And if you want to know more about Jenkins and Summer of Code, please visit our uh, website jenkins.io slash projects slash JSOC. Communication channels to reach out to us. We have a mailing list on uh, the Google groups. We have a Gitter chat under Jenkins CI slash JSOC dash SIG. SIG stands for special interest group. We have regular office hours on Wednesdays. We are holding them online and via video call whenever needed. There's project specific channels that you can reach if you are interested in one of our specific uh, Summer of Code projects. And the Jenkins X uh, Slack channel is also open for um, questions and participation. During this presentation, we're gonna uh, take questions via the Zoom chat or on the JSOC uh, Gitter chat. So here there's the link. After the presentations, you can ask your questions on Gitter or on the mailing list. For participation, we have a code of conduct and essentially, please be nice to one another. Um, and if you want details regarding our code of conduct, there is the link for you. The links for these slides, um, here's the short URL down at the bottom. And we're, um, so before we get into uh, the part one demo, I just like to remind everyone that we're at the end of the coding phase one, where during the, we are in the evaluation period. So if there are uh, mentors who have not submitted yet their evaluation, just like to remind you that we have approximately one day, five hours, 48 minutes and 24 seconds left to complete those evaluations. All right, before we start, would uh, anyone like to add something to the introduction? Nothing specific, but I would like to thank all students and the mentors uh, who participate in JSOC this year. Because yeah, we've already got a lot of great progress, uh, like you're going to see during these demos. Uh, we've got a, a lot of contributions uh, coming uh, from uh, JSOC participants, and yeah, we appreciate uh, your time and your effort um, uh, dedicated to these projects. 
Thanks all. Thank you, Oleg. I, I, I thank you, thank you for reminding us that you know everybody's contribution is super welcome, and we're very grateful to have all of you uh, participating in this project. So thank you. Okay, so let's go to uh, our first presentation of this uh, part one of the demos. Just a reminder, we're going to have part two. Part two of the demos is going to have three other demos uh, in a couple of, in an hour and a half, two hours from now. Okay, so Jenkins X applications and add-ons consolidation by um, Xuan Liu. And Kara is the mentor who's going to uh, tell us a little bit about this project. I believe that's the next slide. Yes, I, Kara. Thank you, Martin. I would like okay. to speak about his work, but I just wanted to say quickly on behalf of Jenkins X, uh, thank you to the Jenkins Org for having us as part of your GSOC umbrella this year. We've had a really good experience and been really well supported, and we really appreciate it. Zuan has done amazing work. So I will let him now speak about what he has done for us. Hello. I am Zixue. I present my Google Summer of Code project. My project is consolidated uh, Jenkins X apps and uh, items. Apps and uh, uh, dons are both used of extend Jenkins uh, X. Now we recommend uh, using apps and uh, delete uh, uh, I dance. You can click the following links. Look at my demo. Thank you. Yes. Yes, the one has made a, a great demo for us on on the apps that he's been converting. Uh, for Jenkins X, so you can watch them on the links, and these are in a blog post, and also uh, you can read more on the project page. So it's been really successful so far, and thank you. Martin, you're muted. Thank you, Kara. Thank you, Xuan. Yes, please visit the uh, demo on YouTube. It has been pre-recorded, and you're going to see the details of this project. There's also a blog post that you can visit and it's on the uh, Community Bonding with Jenkins X uh, website. Next on our list is the, oh, um, so Kara, was that everything? Yes. Thank you. Next on our list is the custom Jenkins distribution build service by Sladen. And he's, I'm going to give you the, um, I'm going to stop sharing. And do you, do you have something you want to yeah. share on the screen, yeah. Sladen? Yeah, thanks, thanks, Martin. Yeah, I would like to. Okay, share. there you go. Okay, um, just let me know when you can see the screen. Right, can you see it? Yes. yes okay, that's amazing. Um, yeah, so. Yeah, so I just wanted to introduce, uh, first of all, so uh, I'm Sladen, and um, I'm a student in the Jenkins uh, Google Summer of Code for the year 2020. And um, as my mentors, I have Christian, uh, Rick, and of course, Paricha has been added. So apologies, Paricha, for not actually having your name here. Um, but yeah, um, so as well as Oleg as a technical advisor. Um, so yeah, so I think I can uh, begin my presentation. Cool. So first of all, I start with the, what the project is about. So the initial idea of the project was to make, um, you know, to have a Jenkins out of the box custom distribution. So whenever you install or you get a Jenkins instance, 
you have to go to the entire process of actually configuring every single instance you know you need to download the plugins you know you need to write the um, you know select whatever configuration you need such as the port numbers and uh, so on and so forth and that takes that be time consuming it can be it can take a lot of time and uh, to to you know speed up that process or make it easier for um, a new user to actually use a jenkins distribution or probably if he has a use case that is very very common in the industry for example you find aws distributions or you find distributions running on kubernetes and stuff and which makes it you know which uh, makes sense to have custom distributions just like uh, on top of the linux kernel you have ubuntu you have you have various other flavors just like that so what we aim to do is to have an out of the box jenkins distribution with a very very simple user interface um and actually that's the kind of usp of the entire uh, you know uh, the project it needs to be very very simple to use and you know very easy to interact with so that you're able to configure it in a very very simple way the third and fourth um, the third and fourth points of the project what the project is about are uh, the community shared configuration so you know jenkins is all about the community we have a huge community and in order to leverage of the contributions made by the entire community uh we have community shared configuration uh that is that if you make a configuration and you want to share it with the world um probably we'll have a you know uh we'll have a feature where you can share your configurations with um with jenkins users around the world which makes it very very uh, easy you know um because there is a person out there who might have the same configuration as you have and you know why do would you want to reinvent the wheel so yeah that's that's about it for shared community configurations and easy access around the world so sometimes you know you have uh, problems with the jenkins server like pulling in plugins maybe you're running it behind a proxy and so on and so forth uh, we plan to make this service easily accessible um, that is one of the deliverables and goals for the project and we hope to achieve that so yeah that's it for this slide moving on to the next slide so what's the current problem uh, yeah so as i explained in detail in the previous actually uh, this should um, in the previous uh, description the entire problem is they would have to download jenkins first select some plugins configure them take a lot of time yeah and so we want to get a perfect jenkins distribution right out of the box so it contains all that we need and can save all of that time for us so that's the problem that we're trying to solve just so that everyone's clear with the problem statement that um, you know, that we're trying to solve there are links later you know you can visit the project ideas page which describes the project in its nascent stages but yeah this is the entire gist okay what's the project motivation we work hard so you don't have to that's a pretty catchy line uh, so we will be doing all the hard work behind the scenes and um, we will be leveraging of certain packages that are already present and do all the hard work so that you just have to sit back and um, just use a cert you know uh, write in simple and plain english whatever you want that needs to happen so features implemented in phase 1 so this is a phase 1 demo and uh, so i'm talking just the features implemented in phase 1 so we have four of them currently um the package config generation the var generation the ability to configure configure custom packages and the ability to add plugins to the package um uh, now this might seem a bit of jargon at the end uh but what it essentially does is your know, package configuration uh just let me see if i can get the pointer over here yeah, this seems better so yeah uh so the package configuration essentially generates um uh, uh the package of config yml so if you um if see how the custom package or war package works you need to provide it a configuration file so what phase 1 is essentially doing is generating that configuration file for you because without the configuration file you're not going to have a war file so that's stage 1 stage 1 is generating that configuration file stage 2 is war generation uh these two uh, go hand in hand because you need a war to directly just run it out of the box so this is stage 1 generating the configuration file and putting that configuration file into the war generator so that we have a, a war at the end uh that stage two um yeah so phase one has two complementing features uh, supported to it so you need to have the ability to add plugins to it so um we are providing you with all of the 1700 plugins right out of the box thanks to the update center and uh, you will be have the ability to configure the package once it's ready so once you have the yml file you will have the ability as an you know as a uh, engineer to be able to change certain aspects like if you realize that hey you now want a different version of jenkins you can do that at the end once the package has been generated so making the jenkins uh, initial setup simple so this is the workflow actually of the entire service and this is the high level workflow so you select your favorite plugins that you want into your um into your jenkins distribution 
uh, you would be asking the question that hey, uh, the setup wizard already installed certain plugins. Uh, yeah, we will be providing an option, um, you know, to select that you want the setup wizard to run when you run your war, but uh, that's a different uh, use case altogether. Uh, customizing the configuration, obviously having the chance to, um, you know, change the configuration to your whims and fancies. You want a Docker container, you don't want a Docker container, that's up to you. And then you relax. So yeah, once you relax, so it's generated ready to use it war for you. And you just need to download and run. So after you generate the war, we will provide you uh, with the option to download it and um, you can just go ahead and run it. So that's the entire workflow. It's a high level workflow. It, so that you understand in the coming phases, I will be keeping the slide um, always so that you can, you know, the, what the overall workflow for the, uh, for the project is. So that's about it for that. Um, yeah, there's more actually. <laughs> so after you download the plugins, you can share it in the community. That's the most important part right, of the community. So you will have uh, the ability to share those configurations with the world. It might be an AWS configuration, a Kubernetes configuration, you know, GCP, whatever. You have it right out of the box. Um, so uh, it is, there is an example here. I'm not going to be going into outside links for now because I just want to stick to the slide deck. Uh, but there are examples such as the Jenkins formulas page that uh, Rick has very well um, developed for us as sort of, you know, that can be used uh, for Jenkins distribution. It gives you an example of what the entire project looks like. But yeah, that's, uh, that's about it for all of the features that we plan to have for this project. Okay, it's time for some demo. Um, let me just exit my screen and, uh, okay, hold on, yeah. Cool, I don't know if I can go into full screen. Yeah, no, the full screen doesn't show better. Okay, this looks better. Just give me a second, maybe I can. Oh yeah, that's better. So yeah, so as you can see, uh, this is the user interface for the plugin. Uh, for the plugin, I'm so sorry, for the distribution. Um, we have all of the plugins that we want to have. So as you can see, you can scroll to pages. This might seem familiar to the uh, to the plugins page of that of Jenkins, uh, where you can search for all of the plugins. So you can scroll around to uh, 1007 plugins, and I'm not going to scroll all the way to the end, but you can if you want to. And that would give you the list of all of the 1,700 plugins into our um, into our collection. So if you want to search for any plugins, that's that's possible. So you might search for warnings plugin or maybe the GitLab multi-branch source plugin, something like that. So yeah, that, that all is supported. So neat and fancy features. Um, so what I'm going to do here is I'm going to follow um, a pretty simple procedure. I'm going to add a list of four plugins right on the screen. I'm not going to search for any one, especially. Um, so what ha what versions are listed here are the latest versions. We haven't included the ability to reversion them because of certain compatibility changes. So these are just the latest versions. We might have the ability to configure it later. Um, so as you can see, I'm going to just add the first four on the screen. So the GitHub auto status, the CCM, the trigger and the Windows Azure. So I'll just add one, two, three and four. And the next step after you've selected your plugins, um, you can submit your plugin. So I know you, there's not much user feedback on the screen for, you know, saying that it's added to the configuration, but that there, there are some glitches in that. So, um, you just add the full uh, plugins and you hit submit plugin. Now, once you hit submit plugins, you, you have the ability to, to customize your war package um, details. So essentially these are the details for your Jenkins war. So it might be your title. So for now, um, I'm just putting Jenkins all latest. Uh, whatever war version. So for now, you can choose whatever version you want. There isn't um, any restriction. So I'm just going to put one through seven point three. You can enter your artifact ID for the package. So all of these fees that are being provided here are uh, pretty much self-explanatory. So you can get an example as well. And uh, the description obviously of the war. So this is your this is for demo purposes. Uh, yo, okay. You also have the option to add JCAS if you don't want to use. JCAS, but yeah, that, that's if you have a JCAS file into your uh, JCAS war and you want to insert it, you do have the ability to include it. If you don't, you just omit. Um, the Docker build. So yeah, Jenkins experiment, you can click Docker build. Um, this is a, of build setting. So if you want to just configure it, you have the freedom to configure it the way you want to. So you can choose the Docker base, you can choose your Docker build. So, you know, you have all sorts of options here. And uh, once you hit generate package, um, it is going to uh, go ahead and generate. And this might take a minute because it needs to pull in all of the plugins and stuff, all of the data. So once you hit generate plugin package configuration, there's going to be a generation of plugins. 
so while this package generates i'm going to take you uh, i'm not going to you know have a staring at a screen for that, that for a minute or so 45 seconds to be precise i'll be taking you to the way you can you know where this repository is hosted and stuff so just coming back to this uh, you have the jenkins custom distribution service uh, hosted on github and um, reviews spring boot and react as a combination of you know so, uh, services so that um, to make this project successful so react is used for the front end and uh, spring boot is for the back oh that that took shorter than expected so i'm going to be screening out yeah so as you can see here this is the package or config yml this is your configuration that goes into generating the var so as you can see i selected the four plugins uh, auto status uh, sorry i'm uh, the auto status the ccm the trigger and the azure storage with their version numbers so you have all of your plugins that you selected the more the plugins the merrier um, I, i remember tick jcas so you can have your uh, configuration as code as well in your directory obviously you can change this directory path now one good feature about this is um yeah just before i move to that you have the build settings you have the bundles and stuff um i entered 2.107.3 so that's there as well and these are uh, default properties so we were debating on whether to include them as defaults um but for now we've just selected to use them as defaults and uh, this serves as an editor as well so if you realize that hey i made a mistake in the versioning and i want to change this version i can you know go with um you know say 1.5 so this serves as an editor it doesn't look like an editor at first but yeah it is an editor so um that's pretty cool and uh, you have the details of your package as a right so if you want to just a high level overview what the description is what the title is um you can clearly see it right here okay apart from this uh, what another cool thing that you can do is if you want to use this in conjunction with your custom var package you have the option to download this separately so if i hit download custom uh, download package i can see it here and i might just click it and it might take some time to open but yeah that's that's it relevant to the demo but yeah you can download that uh, text file and you can use it for uh, generating your var package so yeah as you can see that this is generally opened up as a text file um apart from that that's all about it for the demo the download var file option now you'll be wondering why is that button there so that button is actually there for uh, it's a phase 2 delivery so for the next phase probably you'll see that button working um that button the var generation has already been implemented but you just can't download it from there right now so that's a phase 2 uh you will be able to download the var file and probably i can show you in the next phase how you can run it out of the box um that's for phase 2 so coming back that's that's about it for the main demo um i'll take you to the remaining slides just how you can participate so as i showed you earlier this is our uh, github page please feel free to visit this page and you know open up any issues that you have with the service it's pretty simple to just spin it up and run so we provided docker containers um, a few a few commands and you're up and running apart from this uh, we do have our github channel or uh, the custom distributed service so you can you can have a look here you can feel free to you know, ping the chat or if you just want to say hi that's just completely okay uh, yeah and there's a project link as well so you can find the project links um, in the description these slides will be made public later Okay, what's next? That's interesting. So, what's next is GSoft Phase Two. We're done with Phase One, and it was absolutely amazing. Um, what we plan to do for Phase Two is focus on improving the user experience. I know I'm not very good at UI, um, but uh, yeah, that's something that we aim to improve over the next phase, so that it's pretty easier to use, maybe less of scrolling and stuff. Uh, implementing the WAR generation and download, so that's for Phase Two again, so that you can download the WAR file and use it right out of the box. and milestones so i I've, i've set up some of the milestones for phase 2 so that i could take you through just a just a few just a few of them not a, not deep diving into code that's not what the demo is for but uh, yeah if you want to have a look at the milestones i'm just showing you these are some of them gsoc phase 2 um we have the ability to download packages the cache management some of the um you know some of the all the repository setup and stuff um feel free to have a look at these milestones and suggest or you know uh, criticize any of the stuff that's there um apart from that yeah that's about it uh, just before i hand over the bike mic back um, i would like to thank my mentors kristin uh, kristin drake and parichay they've been absolutely wonderful and i've enjoyed working with them a lot and i'm hoping to uh, you know work with them for the next two months to make this project even better so yeah handing over the mic back thanks a lot thank you sliden this is a very nice presentation um i would like um the I would like to invite the mentors Kristin Rick and Periche do you have questions or comments
Um, no questions, but I would like to say that um, Slayton has done a great job this um, first, I guess, milestone. You saw like that incredible demo, and I know that he said his, his UI skills are not that great, but I think it looks amazing. <laughs> So, like, it's really cool to be able to click all the um, different cards and be able to add the plugins. So I think he did a great job, and I'm really looking forward to Milestone 2 and seeing what he can accomplish. So congratulations. I think he did a great job. Uh, hi. So uh, I also agree with uh, Christian here. Um, Slayton has been phenomenal. He has been independently maneuvering through the project and uh, independently uh, implementing a lot of things. So. It, it also helping us as a mentor and uh, all the best Slayden for the next uh, phase two and you did a great job. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Anyone I, else has questions? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I have a quick question. Um, question. Yeah, mostly about uh, the front end part. So right now we have at least three places uh, where we have a listing for plugins. One is the plugin side, uh, which is basically written in React as well, with uh, Java, not Spring, but Java as a backend. Uh, then uh, we have a plugin manager inside the Jenkins core, and now we have um, um, the custom distri Jenkins distribution build service. I wonder whether there would be opportunities to at least uh, consolidate these implementations and have something uh, um, which would provide a unified user experience uh, regardless of how you use uh, the uh, plugin listing. What do you think about that? Yeah, that sounds, that sounds really interesting because we have three different places and rightly so actually. Um, having a unified um, place to pick up you know, plugins from a central place, that, that, that's really amazing. Um, yeah, taking into consideration that could be done for the future, you know, to have a central listing. But then that would make it um, um, integrate coming back to the service to, in order to generate the list because for the custom distribution service, you would need to have those plugins, um, I mean, pulled or something. So it would, it would make it difficult to come back. So that's, that's just a concern. Mm -hmm. that, that's a, from, apart from that, it's, it's, it's a nice suggestion. Uh, so I think right now the uh, endpoints for getting the plugin list is uh, uh, only serving the entire list of plugins. Uh, we could have a, a paginated query sort of a thing implemented so that uh, we only uh, get a chunk of the uh, plugin list that we want to show in the uh, front end. And then likewise, when user searches or a user go to the next page then based on that uh, further uh, plugin list would be best so i mean that's a thing for phase two yeah, definitely so that's why i was asking about unified view because yeah for example if you go to the plugin site you can discover that there are already search capabilities there um, mm -hmm. yeah yeah they're written in react uh, mostly so uh, okay so uh, this has been implemented the paginated query as well Yes, uh, if you go to the plugin site, uh, there is support uh, for paginated queries, I believe. I can double check, uh, but yeah, if not, uh, it's, well, it's definitely something uh, to consider for that as well. Yeah, definitely. I, I, I think uh, uh, neither me or Sladen explored in that area, so maybe that's a thing that we'll add to the list and case. Yeah, exactly. That's, that's something you could add to the list. Mm -hmm. Thanks. Anyway, it's really great uh, to see the progress there. And yeah, I can confirm that backend also works. Uh, yeah, you just need to, to glue it uh, together with the front end. Great. Any other questions? All right, let's move on. So, our next presentation is regarding the uh, world most uh, popular source code management system, Git. And this is a presentation on the Git plugin performance improvements by Rishab. Rishab, Thank you, I will let you have the screen. Thank you, Martin, for the introduction. I'm sharing a screen now. So uh, I'm going to talk about 
my project, which is uh, the Git plugin performance improvement. Uh, my name is Rishabh, as Martin has introduced me. I would first like to thank my mentors before I uh, move on. Uh, Mark, Fran, Justin, Parisha, and Omkar, their constant guidance has uh, helped me a lot during the development of this project during phase one. So about me, I mostly code in Java. I have some interest in machine learning as well. During college, I uh, wrote a research paper on uh, the application of convolution neural networks, which I uh, got published in a conference. Um, that's it. Now the project. So the aim of the project is simple. It's to improve the performance of the Git plugin. Now, before uh, we move on to how we are going to do that, we first need to know that uh, the Git plugin essentially provides the Git functionalities to Jenkins. And, uh, and it does that by providing two implementations internally. The first one is uh, the command line Git, and the second is a pure Java implementation called JK. So by default, uh, CLI Git is, uh, uh, is included in the plugin, but uh, if a, us a user wishes to, uh, they can use JGit uh, as an implementation as well. In our infrastructure, in our CI Jenkins.io, we use JGit as the default implementation. So um, what we want to do, how are we uh, going to improve the performance of Git plugin? The first, so there are two stages to the project and uh, both can work parallelly. The first stage is to apply a uh, micro benchmarking frame framework to, to, to study, the, uh, to, uh, to gain a comparative analysis between the execution time of the Git operations implemented in both of these implementations. So what we want to do is, is we want to, uh, we want to basically isolate the Git operations and then ideally find out which implementation is performing better than the other for a particular parameter like the repository size or the number of branches or uh, the history, the commit history, uh, and uh, or maybe the different platforms like Windows or uh, Mac or uh, Linux, uh, other distributions. So, so that is the first stage. And the second stage is to use the insights we get from that analysis and to you and to uh, encode and to code those uh, the insights inside the plugin. For an example, if we find out that uh, the performance of JGit is affected by the size of the increasing size of the repository, we can add a switch inside the plugin. When we see that we have a large size repository, we can switch. Uh, we can switch from JGit to Git and and uh, basically stop the, uh, the degradation of performance. So, so what we have done in phase one, what we were supposed to do, and we've done the first was to integrate the JMH benchmarks inside the git client plugin uh, and uh, i did that uh, you so it was pretty simple because uh, in a previous crg soft project jmh is basically provided inside uh, i i had to do nothing not even external dependency it's it's, it's provided in the jenkins unit test harness so i just have to i i wrote a git op, i wrote two git operations benchmarks the first is git fetch and the second is git ls remote and then the second step is to validate those uh, benchmark results. So how do we do that? The first is that I create some baseline experiments like um, using system.nanotime or uh, timing those operations. Uh, the second is to profile the Jen Jenkins instant, uh, instance um, with uh, Java flight recorders. And the third is to ask for expert opinion from the mentors I have here, the maintainers of the plugin as well. So these three uh, are ways I validate the results I get. The second deliverable was to fix uh, an existing performance issue inside the Git plugin, which is called the Git. Uh, the issue is uh, that we call uh, Git fetch twice while we are checking out the repository. So we had to fix that. The second was to, uh, the third was to possibly design a strategy to uh, implement uh, to strategy to uh, implement the improvements we are going to find out from the benchmarking strategy inside the plugin. So why why do we want to performance benchmark? Uh, I think I. Uh, the uh, the uh, the reason is that uh, for any Jenkins pipeline, Git plugin can possibly uh, be a performance bottleneck. And why? Because it involves considerable network and I/O operations. Uh, for an example, cloning a big large repository. So ideally, we would like to find out uh, we would like to find out the bottlenecks and then possibly fix them. So for an example, through benchmarking, I found, I found out that uh, for a large size repository like Ruby, Git is going to be 220% faster than JGit in performing a fetch operation. So that's, I think, um, uh, a big enough motivation to 
uh, do this project. Okay, so how am I uh, how am I creating a comparative study between those operations? It's done using the JMH, which is a Java Micro Benchmark Harness. Uh, it's it's provided uh, within the Jenkins Unit Test Harness, so I don't have to add anything in the. It's it's we've integrated it inside the Git client plugin. We have two plugins: Git plugin and Git client plugin. Uh, so the steps we perform to uh, from writing it to analyzing the results is. We code a benchmark, we then run it on the infrastructure, and then we visualize the benchmark. So I'm going to show you uh, all of those steps. The first is uh, that I have added a module inside the Git client plugin and under the test module. So this is where the benchmarks live. For each operation, I create another benchmark. I have some utilities as well to uh, support the benchmarks. Then the second step, which is to run it on the infrastructure, we just have to add another step called run benchmark, which is provided by uh, the um, previous GSOC uh, project, so it's it's very convenient to add it to the infrastructure. The third process is to visualize it. So what we've done is uh, right now I've locally added. So there's a plugin called JMH Report Visualizer, which what it does is it ingests the uh, benchmark results uh, from the uh, from the framework and it uh, visualizes those results. So uh, once we uh, uh, we integrate that plugin inside the Jenkins instance, you uh, once you build your project and run the benchmarks, you have a new tab called JMH Report. You click it and you can uh, see the benchmarks visualized and you can analyze them. So this is how uh, we've, we've uh, this is our benchmarking strategy for the plugin. Now, git fetch. So with first git fetch, I'd like to show my results and uh, the analysis we have done with it. So with git fetch, uh, let's just concentrate on the first graph here, the first uh, uh, graph here. So the first graph uh, I have uh, the x-axis is the repository size, the y-axis is the average time execution, many seconds per operation. So for an increasing size of repository, you can see for Git or for JKit, the time is going to increase. That's that's an obvious fact. But one interesting thing which uh, you might see here is that there is a change in the nature of performance of JKit as the repository size increases. And how is that happening? Uh, if, you, if, you, if you consider at this part of the graph, for a repository size less than, let's say 5 MB, JGIT is performing better than Git, CLI Git. And once we, once we move on from a certain point, then JGIT is exponentially, the performance of JGIT is degraded. And this might, this might look like the graph might look like they're going to converge at some at some point, but this is uh, this graph has been taken on a log scale. So when I'm saying the degradation is exponential, it is actually it's not going to converge here. Uh, and quantitatively, if we see the results uh, for Ruby, I benchmarked uh, the get fetch perform uh, the get fetch operation for both of the both of the implementations. There is a two minutes twenty seconds difference between Git and JGit when we fetch Ruby. So that's that's a huge difference. And uh, we, on the second graph, you can see it's it's the nature of uh, JGIT performance is same. The intersection point where the nature changes or the inflection point is it's it's a little uh, different from what we've seen in um, the first graph. But but the main point to uh, em the, the main emphasis point is that the, there is a change. Uh, and for large repository, large size reported repositories, JGIT is uh, going to perform. Uh, I would say it, it, it performs degraded and it, it adds a lot of uh, overhead uh, uh, if you're using JGIT for large size repositories. So insights, uh, the first I've discussed, it's that the execution time is of course going to increase as the size of the repository increases. The second is that there is an infection point on the scale of the repository size where the nature of the JGIT performance changes. Now the, the, the important part is that we can use this in, insight to implement a feature which would avoid JGIT when we are using large repositories. And uh, I've shared the quantitative uh, fact. Now benchmarking Git LS remote. Uh, the experiment was pretty simple. I uh, and my benchmark is uh, interacting with the uh, five repositories here and uh, how the repositories, the size increases and the number of references increases as well. Uh, these are the number of references. The references, when we see references, there's the branches, tags, and pull requests, all of those references some total. So, um, so what you see here is the exact uh, visualization which we get from the plugin. So for, let's just concentrate on Git. So for Git, 
for those five repositories, the performance uh, as the size of the repository increases, the uh, get LS mode is going to take more time. And that's, I think, as an obvious fact. Uh, but the main question is when we compare Git and JGit, is there a difference in performance? And there is none according to the benchmarks. Um, it's, it's, it's actually not very much. It's uh, less than a second, less than a half of a half of a second. So uh, even if you see for the for Kubernetes, which is a large size repository, there there is a difference when we uh, look at Git and JGit. But there is a pretty big error in measurement for uh, these calculations, and that is happening because of this benchmark, we're involving network. For the Git fetch one, I don't use, I uh, use a local Git repository to fetch, uh, to, to benchmark the fetch operation. But for this operation, we're directly uh, using the internet. Uh, now the second deliverable was uh, fixing redundant fetch issue. So what was the issue? The issue I can uh, show you, um, just one second. Yeah. So the uh, issue is pretty simple. When you're in the during the checkout step, the uh, plugin is going to fetch the repository once and again going to do that. So this is the issue. The solution. The solution was that I provided a function which determines if we want to avoid the second fetch or not, which on which are related to uh, references. Uh, impact of the fix on the Git plugin performance. So. Um, before the project, uh, Mark, the maintainers of the plugin, Mark and Fran, they, were, they used to get reports that uh, uh, the, the redundant fetch is adding considerable uh, performance overhead uh, in their setup. So, uh, so that's that's what we're lo uh, what we're basically fixing when we're saying that we're avoiding the second fetch. Uh, the road ahead for the phase two, what do you want to do? So as you've seen that we've, we've gained some result where, where we are seeing that the, uh, the performance of Git fetch, uh, the implementation is directly correlated to the size of the repository. We would like to create a class called uh, Git repository size estimator, which ideally would like to estimate the size of the repository without cloning the repository. And uh, we have uh, we've, uh, discussed some heuristics we are going to use to do that. We don't have a definite way to do it, but we have some heuristics, three heuristics actually, to uh, do it. it. It's still under discussion, uh, proof of concept uh, is still to be made. So that's what we want to do. And that is how we're going to move forward with implementing the insight we have gained from the benchmarks. The second uh, thing we, want, we, we would like to do is to move out from the analysis area right now was Git SCM checkout. I focused too much on profiling and benchmarking it, the operations involved in the SCM checkout. Now I want to go to multi-branching, multi-branch pipelines and organization folders. Uh, third is to validate benchmarks with more confidence. That is to, uh, when I'm uh, benchmarking Git fetch, I should validate that it's bringing the right amount, the right size of the repository, the, the amount of the size of the object, it's correct so that I don't get results where uh, I don't analyze results which are uh, uh, the operation is not even working correctly. Uh, the last thing is broadening the bench, benchmarking parameters. So we've, we've seen that not only the size of the repository, but uh, the structure, that is the number of branches, the commit history, and uh, the, the tags, all of that can also have uh, can have a, uh, an impact on the performance. And we, we need to uh, perform a sensitivity analysis on that part as well to um, to gain better insights. So uh, this is it. Any question and answer? Question, sorry. <laughs> I have uh, one question. Uh, so yeah, you benchmarked um, uh, different Git implementations, uh, but I wonder whether you benchmarked uh, the plugins uh, themselves, because we have a Git uh, client uh, plugin, we have a Git plugin, we have a number of other plugins they depend on, for example, uh, for credentials, etc. And I wonder whether the existing benchmarks uh, cover this part of the code base and whether it's considered to be a, a potential problem for performance in the project. So Oleg, right now our uh, scope of benchmarking is the micro benchmarking is that we are focusing on the Git operations we have inside the Git we're using, uh, we're providing as a Git client plugin. So 
currently we are going to focus on uh, testing different operations under different scenarios and possibly find uh, the differences in the implementations uh, yes that is the current scope of the project mm -hmm. i am oh like i am interested in the idea because we have some automated tests already that use credentials so it should be possible for us to at least include credentials in the in the micro benchmarks it's a good good suggestion yeah credentials so themselves so they're probably not a concern uh, unless you want to, to track credentials because then also fingerprint engine uh, gets involved uh, but uh, for yeah. example uh, if in, if you take a common uh, git operations uh, like uh, uh, git checkout acm steps there is a lot of additional steps involved. For example, parsing uh, the commit history, preparing the visualization actions, and other things, which mm -hmm. can be a significant overhead uh, for performance, or maybe not. Uh, but we need yeah. to test it. Okay. Mm -hmm. I, I I get it. Like maybe we will add it to our scope for benchmarking. Okay. Thanks. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because okay, it's just a common problem uh, and usually when you work on performance it's better to have some uh, me uh, metrics on the top level because uh, well i believe that it's not a case for git plugin but sometimes when you start optimizing uh, a low level logic you may realize that it's actually not a concern on a high level because uh, there are problems with algorithms okay. etc in your business logic which basically cause a lot of a lot of performance degradation again okay. i don't think that it's a case for a git plugin um, but yeah okay, that's, a, that's a thing we can consider okay Okay. 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 Very interesting. Thank you, Richard. Is Thank you, is there uh, is there other people who have questions for Richard? Richard, have you had any thoughts on how to deal with what appeared to be platform differences? Uh, on your right-hand graph, you showed Windows on the left-hand Mac OS and they had a very different breakpoint. Uh, are you envisioning that things may, may also be specific to platform or no, your hur heuristics are planning to stay independent of platform? Um, uh, the heuristics will not stay independent of the platform. There, is a, there might be differences when we consider Linux and Windows. But what you see here might not be the actual representation of the, uh, the point we're talking about where the nature of JGIT changes. Because quantitatively, when I see the results the, from the benchmarks, what I see is Looks like the network broke. Yeah, we... sorry, we just lost your audio, Rishab. Martin, I think we may just want to go on with the next the next presenter. Uh, Rishab's done an excellent job here. Okay, all right. Well, thank you very much. And um, seems like there's a networking problem. So let's uh, move on. Thank you, Rishab. Mm. Okay. Um, it seems like I cannot release the screen share. I am trying to do it right now. It's not letting me do it. I don't know who can do that. Do you want to pause the recording, Marky, while we sort out this technical issue? Oh, we can uh, cut it uh, later. <laughs> okay. You have to cut it anyway, because we're in the middle. Mm. Yeah, feels we're stuck. Rishab, if you hear us, can you please release the sharing? Ah, thank you. Go ahead. All right. <laughs> All right, our next presentation today is um, by Kesi, and the topic is 
the GitHub Checks API for Jenkins plugins. Yes, okay. All right, Kizzy, yes. you, uh, you can share your screen. Okay, thank you, Martin. So can you see my screen now? Yes. So hello everyone, I'm Ke Jishun. Um, today I'm going to present the, my phase one progress on the JSOC project, GitHub Checks API plugin for Jenkins. And uh, I have two great mentors, it's Fuli and Tim. So first I want to introduce a little bit about the GitHub Checks API. Um, so basically it's just a highly customized way to integrate CI tools like Jenkins, Travis or Codacy to make reports for PR. So uh, it has some parameters like the status, uh, which is used to indicate the, the, the current stage of the CI job, like the Jenkins build. And we have the conclusions. And the third one is, uh, is one of the most, uh, maybe is the biggest reason uh, why we have this plugin here, this annotation. And with annotations, we can make warnings and notices on specific lines of a code. Um, you can see the annotations here. It's just like the comment you made uh, while you are reviewing other people's PR. Um, the, next, the last one is uh, uh, actions. Uh, with the uh, actions, you can try to rerun the uh, CI jobs, and you can even do the automatic formatting or fixation. So here, this picture is from the uh, official document from GitHub. It shows uh, uh, the status and some other information. So back to our project. Um, I want to first talk about how Jenkins is currently integrated. Um, it's through the GitHub status API. Um, but the status API is very limited in its uh, function. It can only support the status and a short message. And if you want to see more about this CI job, you have to click this detail link here. And uh, normally it will direct you to the Blue Ocean page. Um, but uh, we all know that uh, Jenkins can do more than just the status and the short message. Uh, for example, we have the warnings plugin um, you can see here we have many warnings from different uh, tools like PMD and check style. And we can even have this trend charts uh, to help you control your code quality during your development. And also for the code coverage API, uh, I have this um, GIF here from Jeff's slide. It shows um, the file filtering feature of the code coverage API. So what we are thinking is uh, maybe we should integrate these functions to GitHub. And so we can make the, uh, Jen make the Jenkins uh, more convenient to the GitHub users. So like for the source code view from the warnings plugin, uh, you can see here, uh, it, here is a spot bug warning here. Maybe we could migrate it to, the, uh, to GitHub as a check run annotations. Um, so for this one, we have development uh, a general API. Uh, we did this because we want to be prepared for the similar concepts in different platforms, uh, not only GitHub or maybe GitLab or Bitbug later. And on the code qualities, we try to keep this API simple. And um, it only collects parameters from users. And we try to keep a consistent, consistent style for different parts of this API. And uh, we also keep this API well documented as the other parts of Jenkins and then make it well annotated to avoid misuse by the developers. And we keep, well, we try hard to keep this method testable and reach more than 90% of code coverage. Um, the, so we also provide uh, an implementation for our GitHub Checks API. And the image here shown uh, is the ones I create through our plugin. If I click the link here, uh, you can see it. So this is the title for this check and this is the action. Uh, we haven't support the actions uh, currently and we are, we'll do that later in the in second or third phases. 
uh, and here is the summary, simple summary. And I, I post the image here. But later, you ma you can imagine that there here is something more useful charts like the code garbage charts, the the word is trend, and um, but uh, anything that's more useful. And for details, uh, it's just uh, this detail supports Markdown, so it's very flexible. And uh, I have also added two annotations. Uh, you can even see the annotations uh, while like you are reviewing the PR here. So the next part is the demo. Um, for the demo, it's basically simple. Uh, just uh, whatever triggers the Jenkins build here. For now, I just click the build now button and they will start build the Jenkins, uh, the job. And then later you see, see here, wait a second. You see here, the first one demo is queued. And uh, so you can see Jenkins queued as well. So, so it's in progress now. Uh, there, uh, there ha we haven't provided any output for this uh, in progress by the users. Uh, the consumers of our API can feel free to uh, to make any outputs here while the the checks is is still in progressing. It depends how the users use our API. So when in, when it's done, uh, it's just the same as I showed earlier. So and uh, here in the file changes are also seen. And back to here is. Another thing is about the details URL. Uh, here I just provide a URL, a URL for the uh, ci.jenkins.io, but maybe the users or developers, consumers of our API could provide URL like this uh, build, build page or uh, other ocean pages. It depends how they use our API. So uh, any questions about our Yep. Thanks a lot. It's a really great demo, and I'm looking forward to see this feature. Uh, one question about the, the project plans. Uh, so, are you working on the on checks API, or do you consider to also implement the deployments API, which becomes quite popular as well, and which has similar restrictions? Uh, I'm sorry, I, I'm not quite understand your question. Already. Uh, so uh, there is a checks API in GitHub, uh, but mm -hmm. there is also deployments API. And deployments API okay. allows uh, to specify, for example, where the particular code was deployed as a part of your Jenkins pipeline. So I wonder sorry. whether it's... Uh, sorry, sorry, the deploy um, it API is not that is following our current plan. Our plan mm -hmm. for the next phase is to, uh, to use uh, to let the uh, warnings plugin and the code coverage um, plugin to consume our API, consume our API to publish those warnings, uh, and for the third uh, phase, maybe we'll support the pipeline and uh, also support the rerun actions and some other uh, works. Thank you. Thank you, Kizzy. Is there uh, questions or comments from? from the mentors of the project? No, I don't have any comments. Just want to say thank you. You did already an excellent job and I'm really amazing what you did. And I hopefully we have another good phase in the second phase now. Yes, thank, thank you. you. Thank you, Uli. All right. Any other yeah. question for Kesi? So, Keshi, have there been any particular problems you've detected that that might be relevant to the audience that's listening? I It looks brilliant to me. I'm excited to use what you're doing and thrilled. Are there things you've learned in the process that, oh, hey, this was much more difficult than I expected or this was easier? Uh, well, I think the biggest challenge is to make my code more uh, like uh, to have a high quality because for for example for the non dual program I, I tried hard to get out to get rid of it uh, use the option of some other more standard 
uh, coding styles, and those are challenging. And also, uh, for, uh, and also for like, uh, because uh, because of our our project currently just based on the branch source and uh, plugin. So before they, I tried hard to uh, find a way whether we can. Uh, like use it more general instead of just based on the GitHub branch source plugin. We also think of, I also thought about whether we can support the uh, Git plugin, but uh, but problem is that maybe the uh, URL for we cannot resolve the head shard or URL from the GitHub Git plugins or other plugins and except the GitHub branch source plugin, so that's uh, a problem I made currently. Mm -hmm. And so, I hope. They... Thank you. Mm -hmm. You mentioned that uh, you su you'll support uh, other people to send uh, output to the different uh, checks. Is that something that you would have as a pipeline step that you'd be able to use, or? Uh, well, for the pipe, you, uh, you mean for the pipeline support? Yeah. I guess we'll we'll add the pipeline support in the uh, third phase, and about in the ne next phase, uh, the because uh, we are we are letting the uh, the variance plugin and consume our API in the next phase. So for the warnings plugins users, they can just. Uh, but the warning plugin supports the pipeline support, um, support the pipeline. So when the users use that plugin, and uh, our API is just called by the warnings plugin. So. Great, thank you. So I'll stop my screen sharing now. Okay. Looks like that's it. Martin, you have your question. I, I was muted, sorry. So um, thank you, Ketsi. Is there any other questions? Okay, well, um, on this, let's, um, later today we're gonna have part two demos that's in a about two hours from now. So I invite everyone interested to uh, participate in that next session. And uh, if you're looking for more resources on the Jenkins uh, Google Summer of Code project, please visit our website. We have uh, recordings on YouTube in a special uh, Summer of Code playlist. You can find blog posts on our website as well. And here's a super long list, super long link to uh, these slides. So I would like to thank all our students again for their work. I want to thank our mentors for uh, making all of this possible and our org admins for all the work that's happening behind the scenes. All right, so thank you very much everyone. Thanks to everyone, and I think we can stop the recording. <laughs>